The US quickly began to research weapon design, but did not build up their arsenal. The following year, Operation Crossroads, two detonations with a total yield of 46 kilotons, was conducted in the Pacific at Johnson Atoll. Crossroads was the first underwater nuclear detonation for which they used war surplus ships and submarines, including captured Japanese battleships, as test subjects. Temperature at the explosion center is perhaps 100 million degrees Fahrenheit. The terrific pressure caused winds up to approximately 1,000 miles per hour. The radioactive vapor and debris rose to five miles. The first design and efficiency improvement in nuclear weapons was the levitated pit design. When an airspace was put between tamper and pit, the pit was suspended or levitated in the center. A hammer and nail effect was created when the compressing implosion occurred, doubling the yield of the blast. As tests and design improvements continued, the main aim was more efficiency from the fissile material and a reduction in the size of the overall weapon. Here, the United States moved far ahead of the Soviets, reducing the size of their warheads for ballistic missile use. The Soviets with larger warheads had to build larger and more powerful rockets. In a way, this was a negative development for the US, who fell behind in the missile and eventually the space race. In 1951, the U.S. began testing on mainland territory at the Nevada test site in New Mexico. Five tests of the Ranger series were conducted with a yield total of 40 kilotons. The next advancement was the two-point linear explosive design. Although very inefficient in respect of fissile material, it did reduce the overall size of the warhead. Again, putting it simply, a solid subcritical mass of plutonium in an elongated football shape is embedded in high explosives. Two simultaneous detonations occur, one at either end of the cylinder of explosives. With the aid of shock wave shaping baffles, the imploding waves force the plutonium into a spherical critical mass. This design made possible artillery shells and man portable demolition charges. A further development of this design was the hollow pit and two explosive lenses. A hollow sphere of subcritical plutonium is surrounded with a thick tamper of U-235, which is itself surrounded with high explosives. This, in turn, is surrounded by a lens-shaped initiating explosive with a detonator at each end. A much simpler, smaller design, but one with a highly efficient pit and much better yield. The next development was the use of another nuclear reaction, fusion. Two light nuclei are compressed together under great heat and energy, fusing to form a new, larger element. In so doing, they release more energy and neutron radiation. Isotopes of hydrogen, the lightest of all elements, are used. As in the fusion process of the sun, the hydrogen is fused into helium. A 50-50 mix of the hydrogen isotope gases tritium and deuterium gas was introduced into the hollow pit of the plutonium. On detonation, the gas would fuse into helium under the heat and pressure of the fission process, thus releasing many more neutrons to boost the plutonium fission chain reaction. This allowed for a quicker chain reaction, needing less high explosive to hold the critical mass together and allowing the removal of the thick uranium tamper. Lightweight beryllium was used as the neutron reflector instead. This design was tested in 1951's Operation Greenhouse and gave yields of up to 45.5 kilotons with a much smaller warhead. 